I'm starting a series of reviews on the Niner Jet 9 RDO. And in my series of reviews, the first video that I typically do is a close-up look, letting you see the bike in a way that you may not be able to see it on a website. And if you've seen reviews on this bike, stick around because I think I'll mention some things that typically aren't mentioned. I go into detail about the components and about the build. Before I get started, I do want to mention that I've never been paid by a bike company to do a bike review. I seek out the bikes, whether it be a demo or whether it be a bike that I purchase, which is in the case of this one. But I seek out the bikes that I want to be on, that I want to ride, and that I want to review. So if you saw the video that I uploaded recently, this bike has replaced the Giant Trance 29er in a project that I'm doing where I'm comparing a 27.5 and a 29 for trail bike purposes to decide which one that I want to have in my quiver as my trail bike. Like I mentioned before, for enduro and cross country, 29 for me is what I prefer but in trail bikes it's a little more blurred as far as which one is going to be best and so that's the project and that's why i have this bike so let's take a good close-up look at it so this bike is the four star build and i'm going to start with the frame because i did a first look video on the four star build of the rip 9275 and the components are exactly the same so in case you saw that video and you want me to go right to the frame let's start talking about it the first thing that i want to mention is the color scheme that i really love i don't know how it shows up in the video but Niner has done a really good job lately with the color schemes on all of their bikes to include this one. So I really am digging this color scheme. So this bike has 120 millimeters rear travel. Unlike the RIP9, it does not have the flip chip. So you're set with this, the angles that you have on this bike. So this bike has a 67 degree head angle with this slacker puck. So this is a head cup that's a little extended that actually slackens the geometry. And Niner does include another head cup with this bike that you can install that will steepen the head angle. So currently it is 67 degrees. A lot of you who get this bike will get it through a bike shop and they will build it for you. But I built this bike up and I'll say it was a very easy build. The cable routing is very easy and very clean. So on the right side, you've got the dropper post and it goes internally all the way through the frame and then goes up to the dropper seat post. On the left side of the frame, you've got the rear brake and the rear shifter going in and the rear brake comes out the bottom and then stays external and then goes to the brake there. Like the rear brake, the rear shifter cable comes out the bottom of the down tube and stays external. So really clean, really easy to push the cables through. There is no fishing cables like we had to do years ago. You just push the housing through and it pops out the other side and super easy to do. For electronic shifting that does use wires, Niner includes the ports to do so. So whether it's a rear or front shifter, uh, it's got the ports to run that through the frame and the rear shifter would stay inside the chain stay. And as you can see, Niner does include all the plugs and everything to cover up the holes that you don't use. So you pretty much get everything you need to build this frame like you wanna build it. Unlike the RIP9 where you cannot install a front derailleur, the Jet9 you can, so Niner includes the mounting points and the hardware to install a front derailleur. Also, unlike the RIP9, there are no struts that come across the frame to increase the stiffness. Now, this bike does not have quite as much travel as the RIP series, so you may not need it. I'll report back after I ride this bike to tell you how the frame flex is. But like I said, with 120 millimeters of travel, you're not at risk of having the frame flex quite as much. This bike does have the ability to put on a water bottle cage, which I really like. So I'm trying out this carbon cage, by the way, from dawn to dusk. They sent me some products to review and this is a very light cage that I'll be trying out on this bike. This frame does come with a really nice chain stay protector. I typically will cover it with an inner tube. I know some of y'all hate that, but the people who buy my bikes when I'm done testing them love it because there are no scratches or anything on the carbon frame. So I just go the extra mile. Just wanna throw that in there. Looking at the suspension of the bike, like I said, this is the four star build and you get the higher end Fox suspension with the Kashima coating. So this is the Fox float factory. On this shock, you've got your compression lever setting right here. So you can flick the lever over here for locked out. It's kind of a pedaling platform and then fully open. And also on this shock, you've got the adjustment for your fully open setting. So just by lifting up this little black knob here, you can go from one, two or three. Again, adjusting the firmness of the open setting. Front suspension is a Fox factory 34 fork. And again, being the factory series, the higher end series, you do have the Kashima coating. Do I wish this fork was a 36? Uh, initially, yes, but I will report back after I get some good ride time on the bike, whether or not I feel like 
this bike would benefit from a stiffer front fork. The nice thing about the 34 is it is going to be a little bit lighter. Unlike the RIP, where you do not have a lockout ability, on the RIP you have high and low speed compression. On this one, the blue knob is your compression setting, so fully open, a little firm, and then locked out. And like the rear shock, you can adjust the fully open setting with this black knob here. You've got boost spacing and a quick release on both the front and the rear. I actually now prefer having a quick release. I like the cleanness of bikes that don't have a quick release, but when you're in the garage taking a wheel off and you gotta walk over and get a wrench, uh, it's nice to have the quick release. Also, if you're out riding and you need to take the wheel off. Now with today's tubeless tires and really good plugs, you typically don't have to take the wheel off very often, but uh, you know, it, in case you do, uh, I do like having the quick release on the bike. Moving on to the components. For the brakes, you've got a 180 front rotor and a 180 rear rotor, and you've got four piston Shimano XT brakes. I do like the fact that even though this is a trail bike, Niner did include four piston brakes to give the extra stopping power. The Shimano XT brake levers do have the tools free reach adjustment, which I totally prefer on bikes. I'm glad. They have that and the levers have a really nice feel. One thing that I'll mention about the brakes is they do have the cooling fins which help reduce brake fade on long descents. However, these can rattle around so I've noticed that on the RIP 9275 that I'm testing. They can be a little bit noisy so I just want to throw that in there. You can get the pads without the cooling fins in case that bothers you. I even saw a YouTube video recently on how a guy silenced them a little bit with some Velcro or some felt or something like that. but. You know, again, just want to throw that out there. Looking at the drivetrain, you've got a Shimano XT rear derailleur. And then on the cassette, you've got the 12-speed Shimano XT cassette that goes from a 10 all the way up to a 51. So much better than SRAM. Can you tell my sarcasm there? But yeah, it's a really good cassette. And what I like about Shimano XT, based on the RIP-9 that I've been riding, is you don't have that one gear like you have on a lot of the SRAM Eagle that I've used where it just feels like it's trying to skip out of that gear no matter how you tune the rear derailleur. The front chain ring is a 32 and instead of a Shimano XT, you've got a carbon race face crank set. Now it is worth mentioning here that this bike comes with 175 crank arms. The bottom bracket on this bike is actually a little bit higher than other 29er trail bikes that I've ridden. So I don't think I'll have much of an issue with pedal strikes. Would I prefer 170s? Possibly, especially when the bottom bracket's lower. But like I said, with this bottom bracket being a little bit higher, I think the 175s will be fine. Looking at the wheels and the tires, the wheel set on this bike is the DT Swiss 1900 wheel set, which is an alloy wheel set. I'll have to say, I'm really impressed with this wheel set. I've been using this one on the RIP 9 27.5, and at least on the 27.5 version, the wheel set has been really stiff. Normally, I immediately want to put on a set of carbon wheels like stands, but this wheel set so far is doing pretty well. I'll report back on how the 29er version of these feel, but the stiffness is really impressing me. For the tires on the front, you've got a Maxxis Minion DHF, and it's a 2.5. And the rear is a Maxxis Recon 2.4, and I'm glad Niner did not put narrower tires. This is a trail bike, it's not a cross country bike, so they could have put like 2.35s, but again, I'm glad they went with a 2.5 on the front and the 2.4 in the rear. Wrapping it up by looking at the cockpit, so you've got a 40 millimeter race face effect stem. Really good spec. Again, being a trail bike, Niner could have gone a little bit longer on the stem, but I'm so glad they didn't. I really prefer shorter stems today. They just give the bike a little bit more agile feel, especially on tighter, more technical trails. The handlebar on this bike is a race face carbon. It is 800 millimeters wide. Some people may want to cut this down a little bit. I won't. I like the width of this bar, but I love the fact that this bike comes with a carbon bar. It's the same handlebar that's on the RIP 9275, and having a carbon bar really helps improve the steering precision. This bike does come with a Niner House brand saddle, which is actually one of my favorite House brand saddles. This is a saddle that I probably won't change out. Uh, I like the WTB Silverado saddle a lot, especially on a gravel bike where you're putting a long period of time on the saddle. But uh, this one is pretty comfortable. Again, I've been using the exact same saddle on the RIP 9275 and have no plans of changing it out at this point. And the dropper seat post is a KS Lev. Super smooth operating seat post. This is probably the smoothest operating seat post that I've ever used. And it's even smoother than the hydraulic 
rock shocks seat post that I have on another bike. I also really like the position of the thumb lever on this seat post being underneath the bar as opposed to being on top. And I will say this seat post was really easy to install. You feed the cable this way and it terminates down by the seat post and KS makes it really easy with a guide that they include so you know exactly where to position that stopper. So all you do is you use a two and three millimeter Allen wrench to tighten that stopper at the position that is aided by the guide. So that will wrap up my first look of the 2020 Niner Jet 9 RDO four star build. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so because I'm doing some tests with this bike compared to a 27.5 again to determine what my trail bike is going to be. Also follow me on Instagram at ClintG37. I post a lot of photos and even stories of projects that I'm working on, bikes that I'm riding, and places that I'm riding. Any questions or comments so far, drop those below. Thanks for watching.